Good evening. Wow. I had this message, but I don't I have no peace about it right now. So would you pray with me? And uh, just believe God because uh, I really believe God wants to honor his word tonight and the voice of God and the truth. So Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you for this ministry that is a Word of God ministry. It is greater grace revealing the Word of God around the world. We thank you tonight for so many men and women of God from Central Asia to South America, from Africa to India to Eastern Europe, who have said we've heard the voice of God. We thank you, God. Thank you that you speak to us, that we could be people that could actually hear God's voice, that we could know God. And we so much appreciate the opportunity to have Bibles, to be under preaching and teaching with a pastor teacher, to be in a ministry that has uh, exalted the Word of God, magnified the Word of God. And we thank you that we are steadfast in that decade after decade that this church honors the word of God. So bless this night tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. I was reading something about Hudson Taylor today. and Hudson Taylor was a missionary to China. He lived to be 73 years old. And he, along with 18 or 19 people, that went out as what's known as the China Inland Mission. They established 205 mission stations in China. And they had 800, he had, he actually trained 800 missionaries himself. And they had 125,000 Chinese converts. And he talked in this little article I was reading about the importance of the Word of God. And he said, do you have a concert first and then tune your instrument afterward? Begin your day with the Word of God. And I thought, what a, what a statement that is. Begin your day with the Word of God. And how important it is as we consider Bible college and just our own lives when we consider the importance of truth. We had a message. We had 55 graduates in Togo this year. Actually, in the last three conventions I was in, in Zambia, Uganda, and Togo, we had 145 Bible college graduates in three locations. And really, that's phenomenal to think that these men and women are people who are studying, meditating, and learning the Word of God. And maybe some of them even are not really so great at uh, comprehension, reading and writing the English language and whatnot, but yet God has given them great favor. And as they study the Word of God and they're learning the Word of God, God is using them in miraculous ways, incredible ways. Uh, as I, I think I mentioned this morning, when we had the graduation in Togo this year, uh, the man who was second to the president of Togo came. And he said to me, I have never heard a message like that. I spoke about what is truth. Uh, it's not what is truth, but it's who is truth. Pilate uh, said, what is truth? And Jesus said, it's not about what is truth. It's I am the truth. And he is sending his children to the Bible college in Lome, Togo. And he said, I'm just so, in, I'm just so overwhelmed with the, the scripture and the word of God that we have. And we think about it that Jesus would actually call himself the word of God. Isn't that phenomenal? I mean, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The word was God. And that's his name. And the one who is the word of God would actually, when facing a trial in the wilderness with Satan attacking him in three different aspects, he answered every single time what? It is written. It is written. It is written. And we have, the, as Pastor Shalit said, we have the voice of God. I'm so glad I heard the voice of God this morning. I was even kind to a dog today. I mean, that's amazing for me. Normally in Africa, we do something else with them. I won't say what. But uh, my wife said, kindness, kindness. We we're talking about kindness. And we were like, you know, just it was like the day of kindness today. Just, we pray that it goes on tomorrow. Day of kindness. Really, but it's, it's the voice of God. It's the scriptures. It's the word of God. 
And we think about it, and we think of the opportunity that we have to read God's Word. That this was one man who just took the Word of God as being something very serious. And he said, I'm going to learn the Scriptures. I'm going to study the Word. I'm going to meditate upon the Word of God. And this is going to be the greatest thing in my life. You know, there's a lot of things that people want to do with their lives. I said uh, in a message in, um, in a certain country, I said, it's amazing to me that many people who have learned the Word of God and have gone to Bible school think it's a priority to send their children to the West to get educated in institutions that do not believe in God. I said, that's amazing to me. Now, please don't take that wrong. Okay, we have a believer priesthood. You're led by God, however God leads. But I said, it's amazing to me that pastors would actually promote their children going in the direction that doesn't have truth. And I, by the way, and I said it too. Because I really am not so concerned about how well I'm being liked this, these days. It really doesn't matter. But it's so important because to challenge people and see the, the importance of truth in our lives. You know what I like about John's epistles, 2nd and 3rd John? I love the statement that he makes. He says, there is no greater joy, and I think we can say that about this ministry in Baltimore. I have no greater joy than to find that my children are walking in truth. What a, there's no greater joy, isn't that right? Pastor Joe's father. <laughs> See, I, I got to give you another identity here, okay? It's great. You have a son that really loves the Bible, too. And it's an honor for him to be, and for us to have him and see him in Zambia. But he says, I have no greater joy. He didn't say, I have no greater joy than to know that uh, I have, I've got some money when I die. I've got no greater joy than to know that everything's going well politically. I have no greater joy than to know that I'm feeling pretty healthy today. I have no greater joy than to know that we've added some people to the church. I have no greater joy than to know that we have a building. I have no greater joy. He said, I have no greater joy than I found that my children are walking in truth. And in, in, in the churches he was addressing, there were people there. There was people like Demetrius and Gaius who were fellow helpers of the truth. And they were there to really encourage people and to go on. Even missionaries, they were helping to promote, promote missions where people would bring the truth into all the world. There were other people there like Demetrius or like Diotrephes who loved to have the preeminence. They wanted the preeminence instead of letting the Word of God have the preeminence. And by the way, that's what goes on in a lot of Christianity today. People have the preeminence and not the Scriptures. And when people have the preeminence and not the Scriptures... There's a lot of trouble coming. But he says, I have no greater joy that these brethren, these churches are walking in truth. What a great joy to a pastor. What a great joy to a father. What a great joy to a teacher who has students in a Christian school. What a great joy to a Bible college teacher. What a great joy to a, a body member that knows that their children are walking in truth. Walking in the truth. No greater joy. And the importance of the, of the Word of God and the Scriptures. And John being an older man. Pastor Love said I was 97 today. I don't know where he got that from. I thought I had told him I would like to live to be 97. But, uh, and I was thinking John was an old man when he was writing these epistles. And at the end of his life, that was his great joy. The truth. The truth. What do we have? And you know what we have today going on in this world? And even in Christianity? Isaiah 59, 14 Truth has fallen in the streets. There's no truth. I mean, I've, I've been involved in seeing churches and seeing things operating in Africa that would shock you. What people are doing and what people believe. You cannot, I mean, it's, it's like unfathomable. I can't understand how they could go that far away from the truth. And how easy it is to enter into error. Not just in my own personal life, but you see denominations and movements going in this direction and that direction. It's about money, it's about miracles, it's about tongues, it's about the gifts, it's about all these different things, but it's not about the truth. And this is what this pulpit is all about, the truth. Are we not blessed that we have a man of God like Pastor Schaller pastoring us that is a man of the book? Are we not rejoicing that Dr. Stevens, a man of the book, trained men of the book? Hallelujah. I mean, it's, that was one of the great things that Paul said at the end of his life. You know what, Timothy? Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 
there's one thing I want to leave you. I'm going off the scene. And all of us are going off the scene at some point. Have you recognized that? Don't say anything. It's true. I love it when we, were, when we were in Africa and I see all these men of God getting up and preaching. We have 12 preachers on Saturday morning in Togo. We see these men of God preaching in the, in the Sahara Desert. We see Pastor Bamuni and his 10 pastors in Burkina Faso, Senegal, Mali, and uh, Niger, and, and penetrating into all kinds of brand new places. And he's raising up men of God who are men of truth and have the truth. What a great joy that is. That's incredible. That's what we really want to see take place in life. That's what we want to see take place in the ministry. And that's in, it's just an incredible thing to view. And Paul says to Timothy, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's what it's all about, Bible school. Don't you like Bill Enzor's testimony? I mean, he's, he's, he's coming uh, nights and he's here for three hours, sometimes even longer, Right? And some people have rap sessions after, and it's the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, and the Bible. And then Paul said, just in case you didn't get it, Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.14, continue in the things that you've learned, and get this one, knowing, being assured of whom you've learned them from. Mm, isn't that interesting? Knowing whom you've learned them from. And all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And we think about the word. And Joshua said the most important thing. After Moses, the man of the book, left, the most important thing for Israel to have leading them is Joshua, who would now be a man of the book. And if you read Joshua 1, 7, and 8, he was a man of the book. And if you read Joshua 23, the elders that followed Joshua, they had the very same thought in Joshua 23, 6, to be people of the book. But something happened after that generation. And I'll guarantee is the book was dropped. When the, by the way, when the book is dropped by a ministry, a denomination, a group of people, it's a very sad thing that takes place. And everyone did what? What was right in their own eyes. You know what? When I don't have the book, I'm going to do what's right in my what? My own eyes. I'm going to do what's right in my own thinking. I'm going to think for the book instead of letting the book think for me. I'm going to think. I, you know what? This book tells me how to raise children. Hallelujah. This book tells me what. You know what? You need marriage counseling? There's the book. My brother and I used to run a counseling center called uh, Life House, Lighthouse Counseling Center. And when people would come, we'd just open the Bible. they say, is that all? They'd come schizophrenics, heroin addicts, people that thought, that, men that thought they were women, women who thought they were men, all kinds of strange cases. We opened the Bible. It'd be the Bible that was opened up. One time I got a job uh, teaching in a, in, a, in a college. I was going to teach. They said, we, we need a course called Christian Psychology. I said, I'll do it. And uh, they interviewed me, and they saw my background and credentials, and they said, you're going to teach this semester in college. So I was in a university teaching Christian psychology. All I did was teach the Bible for 16 weeks straight. And then they booted me out. That was the end of that course. They said, you, we, we thought it was like something different. I said, it's the Bible. By the way, Steve Havens, are you here? He came through that class. Your sister came through that class, remember? Baby, people came through that class because of that class. I didn't last long. I got paid $50 an hour to teach the Bible. Can you imagine that? Being paid $50 an hour? Most I ever got paid in my life. Teach the Bible. Then after they found out what I was doing, they said, <laughs> nice having you. See you later. I said, I'll go very nicely, but don't forget. I said, my cousin's the president of the university. Just in case you'd like to know. I could have stayed, actually, if I fought it. But you know what? We found the truth. And I love that, buy the truth and sell it not. We've got the truth. And Jesus Christ is the truth. And what we see going on in this world today, it is such a compromise of the truth. It's such a bent in so many different directions. And here we are on an August Sunday night with a crowd of people that love truth. That say, I love the truth tonight. 
I want to meditate upon the truth. And it's not just the truth that's going on right here in this place, but we take the truth home. We meditate upon the truth. We think about the truth. We pray over the truth. We believe the truth. We say, God, by grace, help me to live the truth. And that's what's going on. When we saw we had uh, 2,700 people come out to services in the last 18 days in West Africa. And it's incredible. We've got people of truth. Just in West Africa alone, Greater Grace has uh, 9,500 people coming to church. It's, it's, un, it's unbelievable. We have, uh, I think we opened up our 45th Bible school in Africa with 12 or 1,300 students now. And it's all over the place. Video classes, ABD, foundations, Christian psychology, classes from... Well, I've got classes that people haven't even heard of from the 80s from Dr. Stevens. Proverbs, they're all there and they're, they're there and they're showing them in, the, in desert places and in villages. They're buying generators so they can have Bible school. We've got illiterate people watching the classes. They're not even so sure what's taking place. But they know there's an anointing and they're learning truth. And that's incredible. And as we, as we go forward, and we're seeing uh, country after country and leader after leader continuing on the things that we've learned. That's why it's exciting to have Bible school this year. That's why if you're considering Bible school, stop considering and decide. I don't think it's to say, ah, no more, I'm not considering this anymore, I'm just going. I'm just going to go learn the Word of God. Because doesn't the, doesn't the Bible say, go make what? Go make what? Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Go make learning ones. Well, if I'm not a learning one, how am I going to make a learning one? We make disciples because we are disciples. We produce after our own kind. Amen? And therefore, from Christian ed all the way through Christian school, all the way through Bible school and through the ministry, this is a Word of God ministry. And we esteem the Word of God more than our necessary food. That's real easy to do in Africa because nothing's worth eating. <laughs> I look at some of these meals I was being handed and I thought, what is this all about? Give me my Bible. I did find thy word and I ate it. And it was a rejoicing to my soul because I am called by thy name. It's amazing, really. And we, we esteem the word. What's more important than the scriptures? And when I begin to think there's something more important than the word of God. The word of God is what develops our call. The Word of God is what gives us guidance and directions in our life. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. And can you imagine? You've got people, even born-again Christians, who are going and attending churches where the Bible isn't even spoken about. I went to a church one time I was there, and the man said, we have a 10-minute message and a 3-hour service. I said, that's so interesting. How long have you been apostate? And I said, I'm not coming to your church. And I'm not preaching 10 minutes out of three hours. Because you know what? You've lost something. You're a, you, you, you know what's taking place in your ministry? 2 Kings 22. There was no book in the house of the Lord. Just read 2 Kings chapter 22 and you'll see eight times it says they finally found the book in the house of the Lord. But what were they doing in the house of the Lord without the book? A lot of strange things. A lot of, by the way, there were even people committing sodomy living next to the house of God. There was all kinds of strange things going on in the nation and in the institutions that were taking place that were supposed to be religious institutions because there was no book. Because there was no book. But we've got this book. And we can become living what? Living epistles. You know what? Is it, if people won't receive the word of God from us, no matter where we are, we just are the word. We are kindness. I don't have to talk about kindness, exergy kindness, give all the verses on kindness. I can just, what? Mix faith with the Bible and be kind. Isn't that good? So I told my wife today, I'm mixing faith and being kind today. <laughs> being kind to the dog, being kind to everybody. I, even did, I, I, I won't even mention, everything tastes awesome today. The food is incredible today. Even the corn. Even... <laughs> Gonna be kind today. Because we have the Word of God. We have the Word of God. And what a privilege it is for us as people to have this book. Amen? Amen. Hudson Taylor said, Do not take it lightly. Keep the Word before your eyes. 
Because if the Word of God is not before my eyes, something else is going to be before my eyes. If the Bible is not before my eyes, there will be a computer before my eyes. Don't take it wrong now. Come on. Come on, don't get an attitude. If the Bible is not before my eyes, there will be TV programs before my eyes. If the Bible is not before my eyes, there will be newspapers and sports magazines and all kinds of things that will be before my eyes. But you know what? And there's a balance to that. I understand that. But we are people of the book. And we have this incredible Bible. And what do you think Satan wants to do? If you were the devil and you're not. Aren't you glad I said that? If I was the and I'm not. The thing I want to do is steal the Bible from people. Amen? I want to steal the Bible away. I want to take the Bible out of churches, out of a believer's life. There's no word. He has no direction. Doesn't know where to go. Has no convictions. He thinks it's okay to drink. Okay to use drugs. Okay to have sex before marriage. Okay to live people. It's not okay. Why? Because the truth says something different. The truth says something different. This Bible says something different. I want to base my life on the scripture. So Satan wants to do what? Steal the book. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. Steal the word, kill the spirit, destroy your purpose. That's what it's all about. And then if he can't steal it totally, he'll get you to misinterpret it. If he can't get you to misinterpret it, he'll kind of hide it. So you learn a little bit of it. Or you do an occasional devotional once a month. In the Bible. And that's his objective, to take the word of God away from me as a believer. And boy, I know he's got all kinds of tactics. He wants to blind people's minds and say, oh, you know what? Come on, come on. Enough of that today. He had church at 8.30, church at 10.30, church at 6.30. Enough is enough is enough is enough. How much, how much of this can there be? All day long, huh? We love the Word of God. We love God's Word. And we need to raise up people wherever they are, whether they're in Azerbaijan or India or Nepal or Africa or South America or Central America or in the United States of America, raising up people of the book. That people stand there with the book and their life is based on these scriptures. And we stand or fall by this book. If I'm, missed, if I'm not liked because of the book, so be it. If I'm put in prison because of the book, that's what they said when we went to China. They said, do you have Holy Bible? That's what the immigration wants to know. I mean, they, what do you think about that one, huh? They didn't say, do you have Sports Ma Illustrated? They didn't say, do you have, uh, I don't even know any magazines, so I can't say Time Magazine. Do you have Holy Bible? Because Holy Bible is a threat to our country. Holy Bible is a threat to Islam. It was great to be in a city of three million Muslims in northern Ghana. And just like preach the Bible. Preach the Bible. And say things. Whatever you want. Say the truth. Whatever. Be careful. You better be careful. Why? The Bible already told me I'm going to heaven. Who cares? What are you going to do? What are you going to do anyways? I'm going to heaven anyway. So be careful. How about be careful for nothing? But by prayer and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. I am tired of being careful. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. No, I'm not going to be careful. No, I'm going to be prayerful. Not careful. And wordful. And not careful. And to see disciples being raised up, to see in that city, I saw the sign, I was so blessed. Greater Grace World Outreach of the city's name. I was like, wow, look at this. And he's got his little television set with his classes from Baltimore. He's got his, his Bible classes from Baltimore, that the same ones that are going on right behind the wall or the new classrooms. We got all kinds of new classrooms this year too, right? Oh, it's amazing. He stepped foot into a brand new classroom this year. And he's there and he's, he's talking about the Bible. Haiti needs the Bible. Puerto Rico needs the Bible. Right? South America needs the Bible. People that will believe the Bible. You know what? What, what else? What are we going to do with our lives anyway? What is it all about? What is it? Like, you know what? Grow old and... I don't know. What a boring life, you know? I'd rather just walk with God in the Bible. Be a talking Bible. I used to love Curly Owens. He's the only person I can say, honestly. There have been some others that intimidated me. We'd be in restaurants and he'd get up and just start preaching right in the middle of a restaurant with no one's permission. Just <laughs> preaching the Bible. I'm like, the Bible? I want you to hear the Bible, all of you that are sitting here today. And I'm like, 
what is he doing? This is like a restaurant with 80 people and everybody's like with their family. He stands up and he's there at a table saying, talking about the Bible. I got like, you know, he starts sweating. And you wonder what's going on. And he's like, what's he doing? He knew that people needed to hear the what? The scriptures. I have no greater joy than to find that my children are walking in truth. That's why I love this ministry. That's why I love this church in Baltimore. That's why you are a gem and an example to people. You are a light of the word of God around the world. There's no way there can be churches the way they are in Nepal and India and Africa and South America. everywhere. If it isn't for this church honoring the scriptures. And don't you love it? It says when the word of God was rare in 1 Samuel chapter 3 verses 1 through 3. God raised up a man of the book. He was about 7 years old. God says, well, you know what, I'll take a seven-year-old and I'll give him the scriptures. And his mother prayed, Hannah prayed, and God raised up what? A political genius? No. A scientist? No. A man of the Bible. Samuel was a man of the book. And Samuel went out and he had a, the word and the word created the vision the, the high priest's eyes were dim. The lamp was going out. There was apostasy going on. And God said, here's the answer. One person of the book. One Hudson Taylor changes China. One C.T. Studd changes uh, West Africa. Robert Moffat changes Southern Africa. These men go into places because they are people who love the scriptures. And you know what? I love Jeremiah. Oh, earth, earth, earth. Hear the word of the Lord. We've got the word, friends. We've got the word. Let's not back up. Let's not think it through. Let's not compromise it. Let's not begin to say there's some other way to reach the masses. It's with the scriptures. It's with the Bible. Our eyes shall see our teacher and will hear a voice from behind us saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Do not turn to the right or turn to the left. Joshua was told the same thing. Don't go right and don't go left. Walk a straight line with the book. I mean, if you're 80 years old, you can learn the Bible. There's a couple of people shaking their head. They're getting close there. If you're 15 years old, you can learn the Bible. 10 years old, you can learn the Bible. The Word of God. What an opportunity we have. What a privilege we have in the United States of America to be able to go to a Bible-believing church that we can open the book and hear. And, we're here. and by the way, and if it wasn't legal, we'd do it anyway. People, where are people looking? They're looking, for, we need help from the government. Really? I need help from the Bible. God and the Bible, He's the Word. Where are they looking? Where are people looking nowadays? What direction are they going in? They're going in every direction but finding the word and seeing how the word can deliver their lives, give them joy and peace and hope, direction and an eternal purpose. I find my eternal purpose in this book. You know what? I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do anything else in this life than other than what I'm doing is speaking about this book, praying about this book, obeying this book, having faith in this book, being around people who love this book. That's it. That's what it's all about. We can thank God tonight that we have a heritage of the scriptures. Amen? We have a heritage that's, that's 50 years of the Bible. The word was given to us. We used to stand here. I, I gave somebody an iPod. You know those things. I don't even know how to work them, so I gave it away. Um, and uh, the person listened to the messages for like 20 days straight. And they said, just all pastor's messages from 1975, 1976. He was listening to messages 16 hours a day while we're riding in vehicles. And I was he's just listening to the message. And I, hey, hey, and he never, never answered me. Just listening to the message all the time. What a heritage we have. You hear those messages and you hear the preaching that took place for decades. And the scriptures, you hear one message, 170 verses in one message. What's that all about? 170 verses in one message? That's somebody who loves the word. That's somebody who declares the word. That's somebody who believes the word. That's what is going to give us an incredible peace in our lives, this word that we find and we eat. So, Father, thank you tonight for your word. We set the word before our eyes. And we know it's not, a, it's not letter. It's not legalism. It's a living word. Living word. A living word. It's not what is truth. It's who is truth. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
And in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's His name. He calls Himself the Word of God. So, Father, we pray tonight that You would give us a hunger, a new hunger, an enhanced hunger, a desire, a growing desire for Your Word, for Your living Word. And, oh, thank You, God, for we have such great joy in this ministry. For we find people walking in truth, not just knowing it, not just putting it in their notebook, but walking in the truth. What a great joy that is to each and every one of us. So Father, thank you tonight as we look throughout this assembly and throughout Maryland and the United States and around the world where greater grace churches are being planted, Bible schools are being started, men and women are being raised up and trained in the scriptures we have no greater joy than to see these people walking in truth. What a great joy. What a great joy. There's no greater joy. Not a bank account that could not be spent. Not health. Not prosperity. Not anything that we think the natural. But there's no greater truth, no greater joy than to find the children walking in truth. That's what John said at the end of his life. I have no greater joy. No greater joy. So Father, thank you tonight. Maybe you are here tonight and you've never received the truth of the scriptures, which is you must be born again. That Jesus loves you. That's the truth. That's what the Bible says. That Jesus paid the penalty for all of our sins. That's the truth. That's what the Bible says. That Jesus died on Calvary's cross for you because he loved you. That's the truth. That's what the Bible says. That you can receive him as your personal savior and go to heaven and be born again. That's the truth. And that's what the Bible says. So tonight say yes to God. With our eyes closed, our heads bowed. If you want to receive Christ as your personal savior, you can receive the living word into your life. Just put your hand up. Because that's the truth. Thank you for that hand. That's the truth. And that's what the Bible says. Thank you for that hand, God. Thank you so much. Thank you, God, that we're holding up truth. All because of grace. All because of the Holy Spirit's life. All because of your mercy. All because of your kindness. All because of your compassion. That you've given us the truth. Help us to buy the truth and sell it not. We thank you tonight and pray that you bless our night tonight. God, every decision that we make, thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for the Holy Bible, the word of God, the truth, doctrine. Father, we thank you tonight. Bless our night in Jesus' name. Amen.